okay well we've got everything plugged in uh, I've connected the sharp 8 track player to the input of the Kenwood amplifier using uh, the lead that came with it it's some kind of um, DIN connector um, I've checked that that DIN connector was connected to the auxiliary input by dabbing my finger on the end of it and listening into the hum. So we've got this set right now. So all we've got to do is uh, put in my favourite eight track tape, which is today is uh, Nani Muscori. So we'll put that in and uh, we should be rewarded with wonderful melodies. Oh. Nothing happening. Well, it's lit up. The VU meters aren't moving. I can hear a motor running. Oh, the head selects, the track select switch is working. Turn the volume. Okay, do I have to turn them? Hmm. Well, I can hear bugger all. I think we're going to have to investigate, aren't we? Well, the VU meters seem to kick there for a second. I can hear a motor running, but there's nothing happening. I think we'd better uh, investigate. How do we eject the tape? Oh, yeah, there's an eject button there. God, I thought it was going to fire that across the room. And it's going to be electric screwdriver time. You know, I'm kind of regretting drinking so much now. So that's the DIN connector we had plugged in. I'm not sure how you open this. Um, I do love my electric screwdriver. Actually, not very long screws then. I thought they were going to be big long things. Okay. Oh, you know what? And I can see the problem even from here. Let's see if I can bring you in. Well, what I can see, and I'm hoping you can see it too, is the remains of the drive belt which are uh, just hanging off the drive motor and I can see that the uh, the belt's broken the drive belt and the remains of the belt and sticky goo is all stuck to it it looks as though the rubber has degraded and it's that horrible sticky nastiness that you know the way it sometimes does so I think we're gonna have to pull this in a few more pieces and then uh, yeah let's see what we find you know it's not obvious how you get into this See if I can see something if I take these feet off. Now those, those screws are a bit longer. You can tell I'm just trying to justify here why I use a cordless screwdriver. And uh, yeah, I don't have to justify it. I mean, I've told you before, I'm basically bone idle. bid for freedom. You know what, there's much more in this than I thought there would be. I thought there'd be uh, pretty much nothing in it, but uh, yeah, there's quite a lot. I still don't understand how I actually get this apart though. Yeah, maybe it's the... Um, Oh, that looks like it's possible. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I think that's released the wooden case. Well, hello sexy. This is looking really good inside. Have I switched everything off? I'm gonna yeah, I haven't gonna unplug that plug as well. Uh, is that gonna take it out of its case? Okay. You've gotta love the uh, you got to love the woodwork on these things, haven't you? Well, this is looking really good inside. Oh, bodge wire. Now I'm hoping you can see. Oh, that's quite a sticky mess. I was going to say, I'm hoping you can see the remains of the belt there. And it's just a horrible black sticky mess. And uh, yeah, it's just really horrible. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put some gloves on before I take that off because uh, I've heard that some of the, uh, the chemicals in these uh, old bits of rubber when it degrades it can be quite nasty and perhaps even a uh, cancerogenic so i think i will just put some gloves on before i clean that off and uh, yeah yeah we don't we don't want to expose ourselves to chemicals do we it's not like all the beer that's swilling around me i mean that's not a chemical is it all that alcohol just recently at work um we, we you know we go around all the first aid kits to make sure everything's up to date and all that lot and uh, you have to throw them away after a few years so they were throwing away all these first aid kits the ones we have in all the vans and they're full of really useful things you know pairs of scissors and uh, alcohol wipes and uh, well these are the rubber gloves that I'm wearing and uh, yeah really handy and uh, didn't cost me a penny they're uh, great then love them blue hands uh, yeah, so let's get this horrible manky belt off. I think this is going to take some cleaning, you know. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, I think we'll try and wrap some paper around it, shall we? Yeah, I think we need to put some rags down there, otherwise everything's just going to be covered in goo. I've never known a, a belt to degrade quite like that. It's, um, I mean, I know sometimes they come sticky, but this has actually turned into... Uh, well, it's like turning to crude oil. It's hor absolutely horrible. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the gold barn vintage audio fair tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to be going to that. And uh, that's on a Sunday this year. Uh, it's always on a Sunday, I guess. It happens twice a year. I think it's now and maybe November, something like that. And uh, it's always a really good day out, and I'll be able to buy some more junk, no doubt. So I'm getting quite excited about that already, and uh, you never know. I think some of the people who are watching this video will probably go to that event, so you might see me there. So if you see uh, some scruffy hippie, that's me. Actually, there's a lot of scruffy hippies at these events, so maybe that doesn't narrow it down very much. I can honestly say in all the years I've been uh, working on vintage equipment, I've never seen... Um, a belt disintegrate in this way and just turn into uh, well effectively crude oil it, it's kind of like printer's ink everything it touches is is black really really horrible the other thing that is tomorrow though it's also the uh, is it the new Norbeck rally in Blackpool the ham radio rally um, oh that feels a bit loose I think the motor's probably sat in a rubber cage or something and it's just rattling around in there so I wonder if the uh, the rubber material in this little retaining cage has suffered the same fate as the belt so I was saying yeah it's the uh, it's the Norbeck radio rally tomorrow in Blackpool and uh, that's on the same day as the Goldborn rally which I think is rather unfortunate timing because uh, I would have thought a lot of people who go to the Blackpool rally would probably want to go to um, to Norbeck as well to the the ham radio rally because I'm a, a radio amateur as well for my sins although I, again I don't really operate anymore uh, I can't 
can't be bothered operating, I can't be bothered speaking to people most of the time. But I do enjoy playing with radios and the, actually the only reason that I um, that I actually bothered to take the radio ham exams and stuff like that is because I wanted to build transmitters and uh, you know I wanted to do it legally so I uh, I went and took the radio exams, got me advanced, me, uh, what is it, beginners, intermediate, then did me advanced. I think I did them all in just a matter of a few months actually because I wanted to uh, be able to build uh, transmitters and uh, I built a few of them, kind of got that t-shirt and then you know got bored moved on to other things. I'm wondering if uh, that stuff that removes labels will get, help get this rubber off because you know I don't really want to be squirting IPA everywhere. You know, I think I'm going to have to uh, go and drink some beer again in a minute because uh, this has given me the stink of this stuff has given me a bit of a thirst. It's not very pleasant inhaling all these fumes. It's a really hot day and uh, this room is a bit of a confined space. And uh, yeah, I can really, I can feel I'm breathing this stuff in. It's not very good. So it does look like uh, acetone is the thing to get this stuff off if you've got the uh, got probably one of these belts. Uh, it does seem to cut through it better than IPA, but it stinks more as well. Well, you know, I, I really don't rate my chances of uh, getting a drive belt on a Saturday afternoon as being high. In fact, non-existent. In fact, that's even a ridiculous statement. Uh, I doubt I can get a dry belt for this on any particular day, but we'll see. So, uh, I want to try it, so uh, I'm going to resort to using some elastic bands. So, will it work? I've got no idea. So, here goes. Oh, and I can hear sound. Not good sound, but sound. Let's try and sort that bell out. It looks like I've got it twisted. <laughs> it's never a good idea to drink lots of beer when you're working on mains powered equipment. Um, so I've uh, so I've moved on to gin and tonic, which is obviously uh, much better. Right. Okay. The belts that I've got are all a bit small, so I think that maybe a better idea would be to put, maybe I can put these bigger elastic bands on and uh, stack them a bit. Right, let's give that a go. What could go wrong? Plug the power back in. Yeah. Let's have another go with a smaller elastic band. Just a bit too tight these. I just feel as though they're going to put a bit much too strain, too much strain on everything. Power. I think what's wrong with these uh, using these elastic bands. I mean, I know they're not designed to be drive belts, but. They're a bit too narrow, and the way that these pulleys work, they're kind of uh, barrel shaped, and the idea would be is the um, the belt will centre itself on the barrel shaped pulley, but because this is so thin, it's just falling to one end or the other. Well, that's playing, but the sound isn't very loud, so that could be the general eight track head alignment problem. But there is a high and low switch on here, so I wonder if that will make a difference. Well, the volume is turned right up and I can only just hear it. At least it's running. Let's see if uh, some of the other tracks sound better, because this could be a head alignment problem. How do I move it? Auto select, is that it? Oh, selector, let's try that.
Well, that doesn't seem to be working too well, does it? But it hasn't eaten the tape, which is something. Well, I've got the amplifier turned up full now, and uh, I don't know if this really means anything, but the VU meters are kicking hard over. So I'm assuming that that means we have got, um, you know, a good loud audio level coming out of this. But the amplifier is turned fully up and I can hardly hear it. So I'm wondering if, uh, well I'm wondering what's wrong. Is this just me being an audio fool and it's something to do with the equipment being having the wrong level output or what? I, I don't know. Perhaps somebody will better tell me. It's got a headphone socket on it, so I wonder if it's like, I'm going to plug some headphones into it and try listening to it on there, see what it sounds like then. Okay, I've got the headphones on and it's actually blowing my ears out here. So uh, certainly it doesn't seem to have any problems uh, driving the headphones. So I'm wondering if it's just a problem I've got that this amplifier is expecting a different um, level of output. Could it be something like that? In fact, I'm just going to put my microphone up to the uh, into my headphones, and you'll probably have to hear it louder than coming out the amplifier. Seems strange that there's no way to adjust the headphone output level. Well, I've just found another lead in the box of junk, and uh, I've disconnected the lead that came with it, and uh, I've plugged. Uh, I guess it's a DIN to phono connector and I've just connected this directly into the amplifier going into the auxiliary input and the uh, the volume levels come right up now so I guess it's just uh, a problem with the leads or again I am an audio fool so I must have done something wrong so it's all working now so that's great so uh, that'll do cheers everybody bye bye for now